around to the Facebook pages and to the um, All right, admit everyone in. All right. Good evening and welcome everyone. Welcome back to the Chazak X-Files. I am here, Ruben Abramov, with Rabbi Lawrence Hadjiaf. Um, tonight's conversation was a one that required some preparation. Uh, we tried picking conversations that were uh, issues that people are dealing with in general. Uh, we also wanted to pick uh, topics that would be clickbait for people to kind of just like randomly search uh, something that they're looking for and say, oh, 5G, what is that? And uh, just try to raise up our uh, view and accounts. Uh, but also, I believe there is a lot to, of conversation, of actually very meaty conversation on the topic of uh, technology and Judaism in general. So uh, I'm going to start by giving a little bit of an introduction to the 5G um, controversy Let's speak about what it is, and then we'll kind of like delve into uh, how what's Judaism's view of technology. Um, and of course, if anyone has any questions at any point, please feel free to send them in the comments, and we'll try to get to all of them. Um, so, 5G. The two major issues with 5G was that um, one is that 5G is primarily designed by uh, China. And that Huawei is the name of the company that's rolling out the 5G technology. And most countries are afraid that China is building technologies with backdoor technology, which means they'll have access to it. They'll have access to sensitive sites. So England in particular, um, which who actually, the English actually raised the issue, said that they're gonna work with uh, China <clears throat> and Huawei on condition that they have some Brits working inside the company, ensuring that there's no backdoor. And number two is that, they, that the cameras will not be installed at sensitive sites. Now there is still a unease amongst the Brits. They're not happy about this Huawei uh, British government uh, partnership. Just but so we Brits, we're, we're skeptical bunch, Rabbi. We're, we're a skeptical bunch. We've dealt with you Americans before. Last time this happened, we lost an entire colony. So we're gonna have to be very careful <laughs> when it comes to you. It's your way, Huawei, his way, everyone's way except the British way. That's so right. Let's just throw it in there. Um, so, um, uh, good. I appreciate that. You know, it's interesting, you know, that, uh, I'm the wealthiest country in the turn of the 19th century, most powerful and wealthiest country in the turn of the 19th century was Britain. And now they're not. Okay. <laughs> we lost a little bit. We're coming back. Their, their way We're didn't work back. very well. Now anyway. we got Megan, we got Megan Markle. While Gosh, we're infiltrating uh, and, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. She's but in we're Canada. coming back. Uh, LA. Uh, we are coming back. You are LA, LA. Oh, yeah, she's in LA. LA. No, the yeah. British is not coming back. They just they managed to extricate themselves from the uh, EU, which LA, maybe will help. They say LA is an acronym for low Alenu. But anyway, so um I didn't say have, that. LA I just heard friends, it. I'm just telling that. you, I'm just telling you what people have told me. My friends that would LA not be good to me. That would so, not be good. Uh, so the other issue that comes up with um with 5G is the uh, issue of technology, meaning you have these microwaves uh, that are being beamed down to you, these cell waves, and it's a much more powerful frequency, and therefore you're going to have a spike in uh, cancer as a result of the higher frequency of 5G towers, people using their cell phones, and so on and so forth. So naturally, there's a big pushback against... Um, yeah, it's not, just, uh, it's not just cancer. I mean, there's a lot of people who are out there saying that these wireless devices and these towers and 5G are actually... Uh, changing our and damaging our DNA um, so that the radiation that's coming from them is making us sick in a way that we don't even know yet. There are such people out there who are, uh, who are saying this. I mean, if it's true, we're about to see the greatest health, human health disaster the history's ever known. So uh, I'm very skeptical about it only because, you know, we've heard the same kind of things being said about regular cell phones when cell phones first came out. And yes, I do believe there was an increase in uh, cancer. If you looked at you know, the uh, rollout of cell phones and cancer, there was, a, there was an increase, but it's unclear to me if the increase was a result of the technology or the decline in the diets in America. Like people, less people were going to the gym, less people working out, more people eating fast food. It's hard to know what is causing what. So I would, I, I, there is no clear data that says that cell phone use, you know, increases cancer. 
Um, we like to say that it does, I, I don't know anyone who has, thank God, cancer in their head because of, everyone's using cell phones today. It's everywhere in our pockets and our everywhere. Um, and there are plenty of people, you know, who use it and don't have anything. So to say that now 5G is going to give you cancer is a uh, hard sell for me. I, I, I need to see the data for it. But yeah. There is no data for it. There is no data These for people, it. These people, that's the whole point. People are completely speculating like every time, which we're going to talk about today, a new technology comes out. Once there, there's any form of advancement, a, a great fear, a great fear comes out with it and right. follows it. Right. Listen, there's a, uh, in 1811 through 1817, there was a massive anti-technological movement that spread throughout England and they called it the Lud Luddites. It was named after Ned Ludd. He was an English worker who supposedly destroyed a uh, weaving machine in the late 1700s. And he was uh, advocating the uh, destroying all these labor saving machines because they were con con created by the industrial uh, you know, revolution. And it ultimately it would you know, replace man and man's ability to have work. So there were these battles that were fought against uh, the British army to uh, you know, uh, stop this technological revolution that was uh, rolling out throughout England. At one point, there were more British troops fighting the Luddites in England than against Napoleon uh, on the Iberian Peninsula. That's like a wow. crazy- uh, Smashing those so, what it, sewing machines, you said? What, what, what were they smashing over there? They were uh, smashing um, weaving machines. Wow. Yeah, got those crazy weaving machines. They were the, <laughs> uh, the internet of the uh, 1800s. What the- yeah, I mean, listen, well, I don't, is, it, is, there, is, it, is that very much different than cloning sheeps or implanting uh, human beings with chips in their brains? Well, for them, it was. I mean, it sounds crazy in comparison when you think about it. But for them, this new technology, moving into this new world, right, when this new stuff turns up, it freaks people out. They think it's going to lead people to be lazy, to rely upon these machines. And, um, you know, and I think you mentioned something about gun aiding when we were preparing for this a little bit. What do you want to say about that? Well, I wanted to say that, you know, we have to ask ourselves like this. Technology is something that comes and goes. We need technology. Technology is often seen as something that is alien from, um, from human beings. It's like an external thing. It's not a part of us. I, I disagree. I think the way I think of technology, technology is something that human beings create. And therefore, it's an extension of us. Just like if you saw a spider web, you wouldn't see and think of the spider web as being a technological advancement of spiders' ability to cast nets and catch bugs. You see it as being very much part and parcel of the spider itself. And therefore, I believe the technology that we create is really an extension of us. So I don't think of technology as being something separate from us. I, 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 I want to I add to that. You're saying basically that any form of technology is good because it's part of something that we've actually created. No. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying that we think of technology as being synthetic. It's some. It's otherly. It's not. It's not human. It's outside. It's something else. Uh huh. And okay. All yeah. I'm saying is that technology is really an extension of what, of us. And there, even though it's created from plastic, it's the stuff that we create as human beings. Just like when a beaver builds a dam using, you know, uh, uh, branches. Right, it's that's his technology. He knows how to weave those branches together to build a dam. Right, we as human beings have a greater reach. We're able to use all kinds of materials to create all kinds of things. And all I'm arguing is that those things are an extension of us. They're part of. They're part of us. They're they're part of us. The technology we create is an extension of us. Now but we have we have technology you know, that maybe extension of us and maybe has good application. But nuclear bombs. Okay, yeah. we've created technology that can destroy the world, you know, 10, 50, 100,000 times over. Yeah, it's the first so, time in history, the last 100 years, the first time in history where we can make the end of days a reality. <laughs> There's in, never in a time in history where we could literally create a, you know, a, a scenario which is complete apocalyptic. We can never do that before. But we I have, have, a, power to do that I have a, a, a piece, a couple of Rabbonus spoke about the, uh, the Chofetz Chaim said that if there is going to be a third world war, Gog and Magog, as it's referred to in the, uh, in the prophets, 
it could well be that that war will last um, six, seven minutes. Right. You know, yeah, and uh, it goes back, even though there's even earlier sources that he was uh, basing himself on. I think there was even a Vilna Gona says that. I have it in my book, I can't remember exactly. But we've reached a level where technology can consume us. Mm. You know, and AI, I guess, is another piece of this, which you speak to these people. I saw into with Elon Musk, mm. and he says, and these people are against regulation. They hate regulation. And they're, they're coming along, yeah, government needs to regulate AI. This argument reminds me very much of an ancient argument that happened with um, uh, Rabbi Akiva and a Roman general. I forget, was it, um, who, who, do you remember which, it was, it was, oh, it was Turnus Rufus, right? Turnus, Turnus Rufus, Turnus oh, Rufus comes to, yeah, he says, you know, what's better, the cake or the, mar the, the uh, little grain of uh, the stalk of wheat? So Turnus Rufus says, yeah, of course, the cake is better. So Rabbi Akiva says, you see, the, the cake is a technological advancement. We've taken something that is in nature and we've taken the wheat, we've refined it and we've evolved it into something called a cake. Now, most people don't, you know, most people quote that Gemara and stop there, but there's a second part to that Gemara, right? Maybe, you know, you know how the next part goes with the uh, charity? Go on. So uh, the Gemara says uh, that Turnus asks, why did God create all poor people? You know, what's ah. the point of having po you know, poverty in the world, right? Let's just give everyone what they need. So Rabbi Kiva says so that God created a world where mankind can care for the needy. So we have poor people, so the rich can give to the poor. Correct. But that original conversation was actually about Brit Milah. God creates us imperfect and then gives us the potential to perfect ourselves. That's really what the conversation was about. Why do you give Brit Milah? Because Turnus Rufus, the, the Romans were against that. They right. felt that the person, like the Greeks before, them, people are born perfect. We're like, no. We need to work on something that, that needs to have improvement. So how you raise that to technology? So I, I'm saying that, like that's, well, the technology would be, you know, the operation of circumcision is something that's not now, any, the tech, anything that's, the human beings were created one way and now you're coming and you're doing a surgery, plastic uh, surgery, and you're changing the goof into something else, you're changing the body into something else. <laughs> and that's the, the argument of Turnus Rufus. If, if you believe God is perfect, then you believe everything God creates is perfect. If everything he creates is perfect, what gives you the right to go ahead and change it? If you were created, but Selim Elohim, you're creating the image of God. Who gives you the right of changing that Selim? And Rabbi Kiva says that God creates a perfect, imperfect world that I'm meant to elevate. That we are meant to go ahead and transcend something bigger and more. You're saying something way, very deep over here. Your, your, your fear, you're saying this fear of technology is that people do not want to uh, navigate, even get involved in this next stage of technology. And every time there's a new technology, like the Luddites, it was a machine, right? That weave things, which now we think, it sounds, it sounds insane, but to them, that makes, these people weren't insane. They saw a problem with society that would come around by women not weaving. That was their big deal. That was basically it, right? Right. Maybe men too, I don't know what's in the weaving, but that's how it was back then, right? So they wanted to hold back progress there's a fear of progress not only progress there, there is a you know there's a i want to answer alana's question but before i do i just want to i want to get to what you're saying right now um is that there was a group of christians that were against women using a uh, epidural because yeah. it says that a woman's a woman's has to be per punishment is that she needs to have pain in, during childbirth. <laughs> right. That's right. You know, and that all she needs is a good trusty leather belt to bite down on, and that's all she needs. That's all she's getting. She's not getting any epidural. Now, obviously, Lena, you... made a mistake. My wife, the, the anesthesiologist in the hospital where my wife gave birth was called the candy man. As soon as you walk <laughs> in, you're like, bring me the candy man, put it straight in. Yeah, no, not my wife. My wife just didn't have anything. That's but the again, there are many people who, even today, many women would rather have natural birth and don't want to have that. My they woman want to have knows, the real my, my wife, experience. My so we're laughing at it, but it's not a joke. There are women who do want to go through that experience and have what they call real birth. I mean, they're obviously a little bit nervous that the epidural will cross the placenta, which it doesn't, which it doesn't. There's also one out of 10 million chance that you can become paralyzed when you're waist down. And my yep. wife knows that one woman out of 10 million uh, women who was paralyzed in the ways down. So she was always terrified of uh -huh. the epidural. Uh -huh. um, but uh, Alana asks a question here. So is there, a, is there a point where we can say that let's stop creating tech for a moment? Can we slow down 
the evolution of techn technological advancement? The answer is yes and no. You see, the reason why there is, there is danger with technology, you know, and you know, Rabbi, when Rabbi Hadjoff and I were going through this conversation tonight, we were listing off like the first times in history, at least in Jewish history, Torah history, where technology was mentioned. And the first time is someone by the name of Tuvel Kain. Tuvel Kain was a, uh, the first person to create bronze and metal tools. Uh, he created weapons, he created hammers, and he created the ability of us creating massive cities very quickly. And the Talmud says that his cities were used to, for idol worship. And you have someone, by name of, someone else by the name of Jabal, who was the, man who, uh, the first man to create a harp. And the harp was a beautiful instrument that could do so many beautiful things, but it was used for, again, idol worship. Noah, okay, his name, Noah means, comes to the word Noah, to rest. Noah creates the plow. He invents the plow, he's an inventor. And society takes this new invention that uh, allows them to rest, freeing them from the sin of Adam, right? Because Adam's sin was they had to work by the sun of their brow. And instead of working, they're doing the three carnal sins. And society gets destroyed as a result of the technology. Technology, with technology comes responsibility. And this is why, by the way, if you look even in the Orthodox circles, they're very slow to adapt and allow technology inside their communities. And they're very smart too. It's very smart to take the technology, but let's slow it down for a little bit. And I want you to know, this is, this is not a prediction, this is fact. In the next five to 10 years, the technology that's going to come out is going to be exponentially faster than anything you could possibly imagine. So whatever technology we've have got up until now, imagine that growing by a hundredfold each year. No, we don't have to cause our demise because the technology can be used for amazing things. Look at this, look at this medium right now, right? We're sharing Torah, we're sharing ideas. We have people who are, yes, it's a pandemic and this is the best pandemic in history that you could wanna live through, right? Because of all the technological advances that we have. We have communication skills, we have video audio skills, we have the ability of entertaining ourselves. No one had that before. We have heat snowing outside right now and like, you know, I'm sitting in, the, in a nice room with a funky light behind me and uh, in front of a computer and like, it's all good. This is amazing. We take for granted all the technology that's doing gr good things for us. Uh, there's no doubt about it. People always say, oh, I wish I could live in the old days. And like, yeah, do you really want to live in days where, you know, septicemia, was like rampant, you know what I'm saying? And that's how people, most people died. You know, I think in the turn of the 1900s, I read somewhere that, that most women died from just being burnt alive because they had these wow. long skirts on, they were dealing with fire. So the biggest cause of death for women in the late 1800s was, was fire, which sounds insane to us. So electricity, <laughs> that kind of fixed that one, you know? So we moved away from these, you know, pots on the fire and we moved towards that. So technology is good. But it does become rampant. And right now, the next conversation we're going to have to have is AI, artificial intelligence. And there's a lot of fear from people who are very high up, not these, you know, wackos, but Bill Gates has spoken about it. And, you know, Elon Musk and the people who work in the tech field have, have great fear. So is there a limit? Is there a limit? And the answer is seemingly at this point, I mean, people turned around after the Industrial Revolution said, we've invented everything that's ever going to be invented. Right? People actually believe that. And if you ask me right now, well, what else could we invent? You know, short of, I don't know, telepathy and, and um, moving uh, uh, over vast amount of area in the blink of an eye, what's left? But there's stuff we don't even know that exists, right? 30 years ago, try to explain the internet. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? So there's things which we don't even know could possibly be a something. There there's an article today. There was an article today in the New York Times that we are six months to a year away from being able to um, take the brain and roll it back to your twenties. We can go ahead and like we we have the technology right now to use your DNA to to go like Benjamin. Uh, ben, was it Benjamin Button? Button, right? Yeah. Button. Right, so His literally body. Roll, to de-age your mind by 20 years. Imagine going back and having your brain of a 25 year old again. That but sharpness, you wanna have that, you wanna, the memory. You wanna, have that a, you wanna have that with a 100 year old body? No, but see, the thing is, you see, once you could do it for the mind, you could do it for the body as well. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this works very well with the Gemara and Sanhedrin that says that before Mashiach comes, when someone dies at 100, they'll say, oh, he died at a young age, right? What does that mean? It means that we're gonna have the, the technology 
to uh, extend uh, human longevity. By the way, Rabbi Ari Kaplan says this, I'm sure you know this, that a uh, part of Tachiyat team does not have to be a mystical, magical expression yeah. of resurrecting the dead. It could be a technological, you know, uh, understanding of how to I bring back the dead. I think a part of Olam Haba, well, he actually says some genetic material, right, from the dead, which we understand was described by Chazal as the loose bone, loose but bone, some right. genetic material to create something that's not even that far off. Right? The fact that all illnesses will disappear when Mishia comes. If I told you right now that in 10 years we'll have cured blindness, you'd be like, that's possible. Right? No way, more dead already, people? Yesterday, yesterday sure. they did the first eye transplant. You saw this? No, I didn't. They gave a guy who had no eyes, they gave him robotic eyes. He was, could see for the first time. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. That is, that's remarkable. Wow. And people are just watching people you know, watching their cats run on their pianos. That's the greatest <laughs> video. This is unbelievable. This is what's happening in the world, and this is the shtiot that people are uh, getting now, involved Now, imagine in. for a moment, if we use technology for what it was supposed to create. Technology was meant to go ahead and alleviate and free our time so we could focus on doing the things we're meant to be doing, which is what? Developing ourselves. Imagine that we use this time with technology to interview speak, te- you know, thinkers, rabbis, teachers, uh, mentors so we could better ourselves. What would be involved in spiritual like? growth? <laughs> Imagine what we could do with all we look, look at how much we do already. So it comes with a twist. Rabbi Kelman always says this, and he says that anything that has the power to do one thing has to have the ability to do the oh, exact thousand opposite. Percent. Yeah, yeah. That has, that's how free so will te- exists. Right. So if technology has the power of connecting me to a million people, it has the power of disconnecting me from myself. Wow. Well, I mean, even sexuality, right? Yep. It can bring life, but it can destroy families, communities, societies if misused. So the greater the level of application and success, then uh, how much more so the greater you know, potential for destruction. And before Mashiach comes, the Gemara says, the generation will come in a time it's really le- clear, right? Which can destroy itself. It's going to have that potential. It can create a whole new world but it's going to have the same potential for absolute destruction, which Robert Kaplan actually understands as potential nuclear uh, disaster, uh, which heaven forbid wow. should not happen. But we're seeing that. We're seeing the potential for something epic or in complete destruction. We're on that verge between two extremes, which never existed before. Either you rode a horse or you didn't. That was the biggest decision you made, like uh, technologically wise. Suddenly we're in this world where Am I going to be part of it or not? And you're right, in the, in the, in the Jewish world, the religious Jewish world, there's an inbuilt skepticism analysis. Do we introduce, I just read an article this weekend about a, a teacher, I read in Mishpacha magazine, who's being interviewed, he's been in, in Jewish education for like 60 years, something crazy like that. And he said he wanted to bring computers into the classroom. And the backlash he received from the principal was just unbelievable. And they went to an outside party and they were like, now, no, give it one more year. And a year later, they said, yeah, and they brought the computers in. So that was the, the again, for us, it, sounds, it just sounds so trivial. But again, it's the weaving machine. It's the radio. It's the computer, right? It's, it moves on. And there's going to be implications and consequences for each one. And the further you go down the line, the greater it is. I think part of the fear of 5G, besides the China thing, besides the trying to, you know, alter my DNA, is this fear of the unknown progress that's going to come with this? Right. Think about this. Think about how different kids are in the last 10 years. Their habits, being on computers, phones, the way they talk to their friends, the way they hang out with each other. When I was growing up, my friends came over. We were running outside. We were on bikes. We were fighting, wrestling, playing ball, football. Ah, you know. The early 1900s. <laughs> how great those days were. <laughs> the right 1900s. And uh, today, kids come over. Let's go sit in front of our like they, everyone. They, everyone pulls out a little like a phone, and they're all like, pull, you know, like it's just like a whole other separate uh, reality. Now yeah. imagine you know what, what I, ha- I, I, I did that too. I was, I was bored as well. Believe me, even doing that. But yeah, you're right. Now we're reaching this level where people need to constantly, constantly be entertained and stimulated all the time. Right. I mean, one of the things my kids say to me is, Abba. I'm bored, right? Our kids always say that, Dad, I'm bored. And what I learned to say to that is, okay, be bored. Okay, to be bored, it's not the end of the world. You'll live through it. 
you can you can you can exist in a bored world, but it's much much harder. Right? They need constant, and I'm the same. They need constant triggers. Right? I know just getting in a car without turning on the stereo or talk or something. Just try driving with no outside influence whatsoever has become almost impossible. We need this constant noise in our heads or we can't even function. I know people who actually use this, well, my daughter does actually, this white noise machine to go to sleep. Wow. Listen, you know, the question is like this, you know, the Elon Musk's theory is uh, for his AI, this, this, this fear of like uh, artificial intelligence becoming our overlords. He says that ultimately that, you know, what we've done in the last hundred years is we've stopped evolution, right? We stopped it. Why? Because we have all these medicines. People with diabetes are living now, they're having children. And now more and more people are passing down diet, di you know, genes with diabetes. More and more people are passing down all kinds of, you know, babies that were, could not have been born before because of their size, you know, that, that the average head size has grown by 25% over the last 100 years because we've, when a baby's born, we've, we have the better technology of cesarean and now you have a few generations of kids who are being born with bigger and bigger heads. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, you know, and now the women are having a harder time with labor, but they have a cesarean. So like it's, so we've stopped evolution, right? And therefore, um, the way in which we're moving forward is that we're going to have to, you know, choose how we're going to want to evolve. Mm -hmm. So, I so this think is that, evolution. Yes. This is evolution not between species, but of species. Correct. That's what you're referring to, Amazing. right? Right. Correct. So the question is, if there is going to be a technology that allows you to have all of your memory stored in the cloud or if you had access to everything on the internet, you could pull it out like in matrix style, learn anything, karate, guitar, by just like saying, download, you know, guitar, download that song. And now you know how to play it. You're saying you wouldn't want to do it. I totally No, we had, a, we, had a, we had a game we played this Shabbat. I had a guest come over right. and we said, right. pick any superpower you want. What superpower would you like? So the first one that always comes up is, I want to be invisible. So I'm like, I don't know what are you gonna do with the invisibility? And we're not discuss the answers that they gave, but it involved going to banks and other places to get money and other things. <laughs> and then so I want to read other people's minds. And I'm like, really? You want to know what people are thinking about you all the time? Better it should stay in their head and not enter into yours. Are we going to fly from place to place? Or you just turn up somewhere? There's always going to be a consequence. Any, that, that's, we're talking about superpowers right now. right? What yeah. seems to us, what we consider natural, for people hundred years ago was a superpower. I mean, I could go from one country to another in seven hours. You know, these are superpowers. So now we're trying to figure out what is the superpower we want for the future? How are we gonna be able to deal with superpowers of the future? Is this what we really want? What are the consequences of these superpowers? Are other countries gonna be able to listen in to us? Right, that's the whole fear of the China thing. Whether it's true or not, right, the Huawei thing. But again, it's uh, right now it's a conspiracy theory but there's a truth behind it because 100%. now we've gone on the internet. Suddenly people are listening in, right? Listening into information. I see Joseph asks your opinion. I don't, I don't know. He's asking opinion what we're on this general topic. Um, my general opinion, if that's what you're asking, is that everything, every technology is a double edged sword. It comes with a potential downfall. Always. Right. It must do. Hashem created this world with Bechira, with free will. And in order for that to be true, there's always going to be a potential for some Ra to go with it. So there's nuclear weapons, but there's nuclear energy, right? So there's always going to be a, a tagline. So AI sounds amazing to me, right? Being invisible, right? You see right now, they're trying to, they created invisible tanks and people put these cloaks on, right? It sounds like very Harry Potter, but cloak of invisibility. They've created this technology. Go online, you'll see people who created these things which, which are able to distort them. But do you want to be invisible? And if you have this power, what's going to happen? If the wrong people get this power, what are they going to do with it? Right. Listen, I'm just waiting for them to create the, the technology where I can eat whatever I want and not gain weight. Um, hey, <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 one second. I'm waiting for that technology. This, we're, flying to Mars. <laughs> we're, we're flying to Mars and they haven't figured out male paddle boldness. I, that's what I want to know. <laughs> All this technology, and they can't mm. fix me with... I actually, they can't fix it. It's called Rogaine. Uh, I have a guy that I have a, friend, a student that works there. Actually, Charlie Rabinovich works for the Hair Club for Men. He I can think take I'm, care of you. I'm way, I'm way past that, my friends. 
right, think even I walk just... into the uh, into that club, they'd be like, "Yeah, I don't think so, Rabbi." It's too late for you, Joseph. Just to answer your question, the answer is, um, I would embrace it. I'm not going to fight that. Meaning, the concern is like this: Are there um, centralized, you know, um, governments that are using this technology in a bad way? And the answer is probably that for sure. China is definitely using technology in a very destructive way. Is the American government? Not yet. Uh, depending on where the government goes, it could change. There's no question that everything we're creating, again, can be used for bad things, but it could also be used for a lot of good. And I think that, you know, maybe next week we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, what's going on with, with GME, with GameStop. You know, I think that that's all a good thing. You know, I think that uh, the idea of uh, decentralizing um, things are is important and technology is a uh, the most powerful tool that allows us to decentralize power and I'm the gonna, internet I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight back i'm gonna fight back when we get there i'm gonna fight right, back good. on that I have, I have my own opinions okay, on that which we're gonna get to next good. week i'd love to have that conversation with you next week anyway but but the idea is that technology is meant to become an equalizer think about it you know a gun it was a, when guns came out it was the first time that a woman actually had a chance against a man in a, in a fight, right? A real chance. They just then, stabbed them, but yeah. But the odds are, a woman and a, a man both have swords. We know it's, we know who's winning that match at the end of it. Most men, most men would win that match. So it's just very. I'm not saying women can't defend themselves. It's just that men are so built all the women listening. I did not say this. I accept the fact I can I, be stabbed at any moment. He's married to an Ashkenazi wife, and I'm not. Anyway, so so <laughs> so so. so so uh, we have, I'm going to get in trouble for this later, but um, I, um, I'm, all I'm saying is that every, most people will tell you that the biggest equalizer, technological equalizer in history was the gun, okay, the handgun. Okay. A okay. woman and a man now are, both have equal amount of firepower. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter how fast you are. It doesn't matter how much muscle you have. It matters not, okay? You both have the same chance of having the same aim. A gun created an equalizing opportunity for both men and women. Okay. Technology has done the same thing for men and women. Women today have opportunities uh, in the world of technology that men do. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's given them an opportunity to kind of like, you know, move up in ways that they could not have before because they have access to the same stuff that we do. I mean, we're seeing that, we're seeing that with minorities. We're seeing that with third world countries. Everywhere. So we, we're seeing so, this. So technology this this flat Technology, earth concept that, that's really correct. resulted from Correct. So it. I think that's the, po that's the positive thing of technology. The technology actually gives us the ability that my, the technology in my phone is no different than the, in the technology in the phone of the United States of America or the phone of some you know, young boy in, in, uh, somewhere in Northern Africa. It's all the same stuff. And that we, it's become cheap, it's become affordable, everyone has it, and it's amazing. You know that, I, read that a, I, I, read, are, I read a great article actually yeah. Well, someone said, if you've got a guy from like, you know, 60 years ago, put him behind a screen. On the other side of the screen was a person in 2021 with a phone. Ask any question, he answers it. Because using a book, not a single book over here. Right? What has he got? He's got his phone. We have become augmented beings. Right. That's really what we've become. Right? It's, it's Mamash Yad Vashem. It's a hand. And in my hand, I have a name to everything I need. Right? Right. This is Mamash what is happening now. We have become augmented beings. There's still a problem that comes with that. I mean, personally, we see terrorists in Iran, right? We see nuclear bombs that are being taken over by technology. So I personally, there's a great use of it, right? They come to threaten us. And if we have to use technology to mess up their centrifuges, if we have to use, or they now know that this Fakhri Sadeh, this nuclear scientist in Iran was killed, not by people, not by an ambush, like they came to think. It was guns mounted on automatic cars. Right? It's unbelievable. So the, the, the technology that is being used today to fight back against evil has become a, a tremendous uh, uh, boon for mankind. But as you said, it's open for misuse. So there right. needs to be some oversight. I'm a believer in oversight, and I don't know if it should be governments. I don't trust governments. You know, I, I'm not a, a liberal in that sense of putting all the money in the government. Who are these, who are these angels? Right. You no, know, who are these angels in the government who are going to be so fair and good? Right. right. Like, like the Russian angels in their government, or the Chinese or the North Koreans, right? It's coming with a tremendous responsibility. You know, who's going to be the oversight? We don't have the answer to that. Right. That question has been left unanswered so far.
Right. Listen, it's a it's a good question. I think that you know that a couple of things. There's like a, lot, a couple of questions going on here. One on Instagram and uh, one on uh, Zoom. And good night. Love you. All right. Sorry about that. But um, um, so one question is over here to you, Rabbi. It says uh, when you said that it can't be without noise. Just reminded of how Pharaoh kept us so busy to the point where we weren't able to think. Same yeah. thing nowadays. That's in Galut Mitzrayim. You know, we were still there. Though we have all this technology to help us with the time, we don't have time to do simple things. But that's not because of technology. That's because of our lack of discipline. Mm, right? Yeah, but technology is um, not as helping. Far as trans- no, I mean, no, it can help. As, it can help as long as we are able to learn to be disciplined. You can't give a, a child the code to the nuclear, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, bombs. You, you, it's just, that's silly. He gets upset. You don't give me what I want. Boom, I'm going to nuke you all the time. And we're that with those kids today. We're playing with big, big things. We don't fully understand how they work. And it's because we have created a society of people that are, don't understand what it means to be in control. Um, on my opinion on transhumanism, I think it's going to become a reality. I think it's inescapable. Um, you know, I think that- um, What was that again? What was tra- that? Transhumanism. Meaning what? Meaning becoming a cyborg. Oh, transhumanism. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think this, this movement into augmented beings, we're going to start, it's the next phase is going to be wearing technology. Yeah, under okay, your skin I, and your eyes, right. 100%. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, am, yeah. but I tell you, so that, that scares me more than a lot of other things. And actually, as a Sabbath observant people that we are, uh-huh. I don't know how we're going to handle that because eventually you're not going to touch a, a light switch. Right? And the germ fascination we now have has, has not helped that. Walk into the room, lights come on. These are going to be big questions. Yeah, you're going to have, you'll have Shabbat mode. That's all. We'll invent Shabbat mode on all those things. So we'll keep Shabbat. It does exist, actually. I have a friend who did that. It wasn't accepted, but I have a friend in the Persian community who created that. The Ungrama. So we have a uh, Alana Koipin saying that her company that she works for has something called, uh, it's called uh, Rhythm, Rhythm Pharmaceuticals. They put a drug on the market that focuses on rare genetic diseases of obesity. So wow. is it wrong to uh, pray using your phone via an app by the Javis, right? Um, I don't think it's wrong to use a phone to pray. Obviously, I use it all the time. I just don't have a Sidor. I, I play a Sephardic Sidor. I don't have it with me sometimes. I go to Ashkenazi Minyan. And having my uh, Sidor app there is huge. It's very helpful. Ideally, I try not to use what was that. What, what's that? What's that going? How did you jump from medication for obesity to using no so a lot was mentioning that i said i would love for there to be a technology that you know uh, oh she's saying it exists instead of starting it already okay you got a and, customer yeah yeah I'm t- i'll take two um and then as far as using your phone no, i don't think there's anything wrong with that it's not ideal okay. so like let, let, let's just try to close up because we've been going on for almost 40 minutes and i want to this has been too long let's just try to uh, most of the world now is shomer nagia what Okay, that's so, true with with coronavirus yeah uh, coronavirus yeah, that's yeah. true also so uh so um so let's just try to do this let's just try to wrap up a little bit um the purpose of technology is to help us become to help us alleviate our busy work life so we could focus on developing our soul so we could help us develop a deeper sense of self and when technology is not used properly it's super destructive right so now is it worth having it? That's the question. Are we better off with it or without it? And I don't know how to answer that question. Are you willing to let go of all of the comforts that you have right now? I'm going to stay, I'm going to be honest. The answer is no, I'm not. Most people say no. And therefore I would argue that it is in our best interest (laughs) to re-envision what education is like in, in the world. And we should no longer be testing kids about facts. It's irrelevant. They could Google it later. What we should be teaching kids today and young adults is discipline, is understanding the self, developing a soul, teaching them time management, teaching them how to you know, use technology as a tool uh, that helps them achieve their unique mission in life. That is why God created, created the, the technology. That's what it's there for. That's what it means so, when God says to Adam, I could put you in the garden of the Lushamra. Your job is to work it and to guard it. His yeah. work was the garden and he was to work it and guard it, guard himself and losing himself to the uh, work constraints of uh, you know gardening. And he's not a gardener, he's a human being that has to garden. So he has a time to work on himself. 
What are you, what are you saying about it? I um, I, I have, no, I have a lot to say about that. Uh, I agree with you. I think that uh, education has to change. It's stuck in the past. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons. I mean, I teach Judaic Studies University. And my class are very popular because people want to know more about themselves, want to understand their role in this world and their mission in this world. You know, most of technology has been conquered, right? But then, mm. but then it's always going to be groups. You have the Amish, you have Abdul the Hasidim, who are scared of technology. There's a wariness of it. They're trying to push it back. They're trying to go back. But as, as Margaret Thatcher once said, you can't uninvent nuclear weapons. This doesn't work that way. And we've got to a point, and either you, you progress and you adapt or you die. And that's really what the, the, the evolution uh, of species has taught us, which you can't deny. If you don't adapt, you will die. And speaking now as a rabbi, and someone wants to see the Jewish people going, right? I've seen it, and we've seen it ourselves, because we, you know, rabbis are obsessed with this topic. We've seen communities who don't adapt to technology, who don't adapt to new understandings, and they're losing the communities and losing the, the gap between the parents and the children is too far to bridge. And the rabbi and the teacher to their student, right, to, to the daughter, to the son, is too big. You've got to adapt and move forward. There's a great TED video. I mean, this is just a small example, which one of my favorite ones. I actually met the guy who said this. He got millions of views on this one. And he's a math teacher. He's a mathematician, like a genius mathematician. And he's a professor of math, I think, at one of the universities. I can't remember which one. And he, uh, he says, we've got to stop teaching um, algebra, calculus. Got to move to statistics, right? I say, open newspaper. There's no algebra in there. It's all stats, right? Statistics is that we've got to move into that world and move away from the old. But even in the secular academic world, right, trying to, to re-engage and create that has become very, very difficult. We're having the same thing in the Jewish world. How do we adapt, right? It took time, but it's moving in that direction, right? Teaching, teaching Torah, spiritual growth online through apps, through information, through videos that me and you are, we realized this a while ago, right? Just takes time, effort, and money, if anyone wants to sponsor, to move them to the next realm. So this is what we are, we are looking at, you know, but there's always going to be a fear. And I think this 5G thing, it's not about the Chinese, and it's not about radio waves. It's about fear for the future, fear of change, and the Amish, you know, deal with it. You know, do we use buttons, right, or clips, right? Do we go by horse, buggy, and car? So it's become like a cute thing for us. And but maybe it is cute, so we have somewhere to go on Holomoed to visit these people. I always say, why do Jews go visit the Amish? They want to see Hasidim without cell phones. All right? This is uh, really what we want to see, but it's a much bigger question. How do we embrace, use, and utilize this world of technology to better ourselves? Not just society, but society is made up of individuals. Right? The Torah is not like Marx's history. Marxian history it was all about societies come and go. It's about individuals. We go from creation of the world, which is like 20 pesukim or so, into Adam and Chava and Cain and Hebel and Noch and Avram. We go into people. How are people going to adapt to this technology? Each individual counts. That's going to be the question. And the AI is going to bring a big, big, big question with it. Right? To what degree are we going to lose our, our, uh, our growth potential once these, whatever they are, I don't know, like cyborgs i got no idea this well, I, I don't reality. see how that's how that's any different just I, let's let, let's just like try to like close so we say the tree of knowledge you know uh, failed adam i don't think it did i think that adam was uh very clear about his choice he chose to eat from a tree that would give him free will the yeah. ultimate free will and therefore um you know uh if technology gets us back to a place where we have no free will imagine i could just program myself to just do mitzvot to do the thing well, of God. Well, the Ranban says that's where we're going. With the right. coming of Mashiach, that's we're going to go point. back to so, free so, Ghanai, so, free so is that the ideal? Is that the place we want to be? I don't know. I think that Adam said that, you know, I'd rather be a human being that could choose to make mistakes mm -hmm. than be an angel. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, but I think that the, uh, the takeaway from the, the lesson is that, you know, I think that technology is dangerous. Uh, we have reason to be concerned and that when we're concerned about these things that really should be not a time to panic but a time to prepare and figure out how to use it to elevate ourselves and become something bigger and greater good stuff thank you everyone thank you rabbi for letting me be part of your discussion again uh, as always rabbi it's a pleasure
Thank you for adding uh, all that you do. Um, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Thank you all for sharing your questions. We look forward to uh, continuing the conversation, God willing, next week. Same. The week, last same of time. our series. The, the last, last of, of our series. series. If anyone has a different series that they want us to tackle, we're open to it. If there are any other conspiracy theories that we missed that you want us to deal with or any other questions you want us to deal with, we're happy to do so. Have an amazing week. Shavuot to everyone. Thank you Take so care. much for listening. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye.